Hi! On today's video we're going to talk about color, which is one of the most fun parts about quilting, but also one of the most challenging and sometimes intimidating to people um, in just knowing what colors to choose and how to choose them and how to put them together. So there are some, some theories and some rules that you can follow and uh, also you don't have to follow any rules either. You can do whatever you want, but there are, there are some basic rules of putting colors together that um, tend to look nice. Uh, I'm using some of my beautiful star fabrics, um, hand dyed fabrics from Star Design Fabrics, which I use a lot in my kits and I call this my crayon box. I just have uh, a lot of them and they're very fun to work with. I also have um, this color tool, which you may have seen that has, uh, you know, all the different colors and shades and all that values and um, so this is a great thing to study. We're just going to look at it kind of briefly today. Um, so what I've done is chosen one color to start with. So kind of this orangish color, which is represented by this fabric right here. Um, and on the back of this uh, tool, it shows some different options. And these are definitely not all of the options, but it shows some of the options for uh, how, how to choose colors to go with that. So, um, so there's the orangish color and you could just do kind of a monochromatic with just that color and several different shades of it, just lighter and darker. Or you could do um, complementary, which is exactly the opposite on the color wheel. So that would be um, putting, putting that orange together with this blue. Maybe you could do a couple different shades of the blue um, and a couple different shades of the orange. Um, but that would be very high contrast, exact opposites. Um, another one is analogous, and that's the one that I commonly um, use in my designs. I just tend to like the analogous, the colors that are near each other on the color wheel. And so that's what this is right here. Um, just, you know, colors that are all close together. And I tend to put them in order, usually even. Um, and then the other one I have represented here is this one at the very bottom, the triadic, which is kind of like kind of the primary colors or um, the three that are most evenly distributed throughout the color wheel. And so that's very high contrast also. Um, and then there's a couple more options on this. I also have a book. Uh, design Explorations for the Creative Quilter by Katie Peschini Masopust, which I imagine I did not say correctly, but we'll, hopefully that was close. Um, and I will have links to all of these things in the comments, um, the fabric and the book and all that. So she has a really great um, set of a bunch of different color scheme options also. So what you do is just start with one color and then you look on the color wheel to see what other colors would go with that one for each of these possible schemes. So I'm just going to be looking at three different ones today and we're going to make a greeting card out of each of those three color schemes so you can see what, what it looks like. And greeting cards are just a really great way to practice this because they're a very small project and you still end up with something useful when you're done with your playing. So let's get started on three different um, greeting cards. All right, so I've made three examples of uh, cards using the three different color schemes that we talked about. So this one, of course, is the analogous color scheme. So I just started with, all, and all three of these started with a five by six inch piece of batting and interfacing, and then I just started covering it with fabrics. And so this starts with the four four strips and I just cut kind of a random wavy strip and um, alternate the curve. If you if you goof, they don't have a right and wrong side, so you can just flip it over the other way. So there, it's kind of fun to play with this, um, with these little cards because you really just kind of can't mess up. So, um, so and I just raw edge stitched those down to the batting. And then to make the leaf, I cut out two leaves at once with both of the fabrics stacked on top of each other. Um, so they'd be exactly the same, and then I just cut one in half, and that way you know they're going to line up perfectly. Um, I had my tension off a little bit on my free motion stitching, as you can see. Um, I could have used matching thread too, but usually I just lower the top tension and call it good. 
Um, then I, so I stitched around the edge of that and added a little bit of veins there. So I didn't put binding on these yet because you have several options. You could just use the, the main fabric that we started with for the binding. Or a fun way to do these would be to use the, um, you know, this one on this side and this one on this side and then one of the, the middle ones on the top and the bottom. So that would be kind of fun for that one. This was the um, triadic with the three farthest away from each other on the color wheel. And uh, for this one, again, I started with my five by six inch piece of uh, batting and interfacing and then cut a piece of background fabric that big and just kind of a wavy stripe out of one of the other two fabrics and, um, and then just a really simple flower out of the third one. And it doesn't matter really which order you do those in, it's just that, you know, flowers are more commonly pink than green. So that's why I did it that way. And then I found a button that had all three of the colors in that kind of ties it all together. Uh, and for the binding on this one, I might use uh, this fabric to kind of bring out that color some more. And then I just added quite a bit of free motion stitching and a little decorative stitching on the edge of this piece. And that uh, kind of softens that edge between those two high contrast pieces also. Then the last one is just two colors. I did use two shades of each color, um, but that's the most high contrast. They're exactly opposite each other on the color wheel. And so you can do that with any, any starting color and you would just end up with two different colors. Um, so it'd be kind of fun to play around with some different color combinations, but I just made two small rectangles and stacked them on top of each other and a little heart in the middle and a little more free motion. And then I found some fabric that would be really neat for binding. And you can just audition bindings like that just by laying them on. Um, but that fabric has all the colors in it. So it would tie everything together. So that was a very, very quick and brief introduction to color theory and overview. But um, I, I'm trying to make these videos uh, seem doable to anybody and not make them too complicated. There's a whole lot more that you can do with color theory. Uh, but this is just a really simple way to kind of get your feet in the water and, um, and try it out and play with it. And you end up with some nice gifts when you're done. We have another video that shows you how to trim them down to size and how to put the binding on and how to glue them on to the card. Um, that should be up very soon. It's just about binding and finishing greeting cards too. And that applies to any, any design. So we put that in a separate video. So thanks for joining us. And I hope you will play with um, colors and fabric and a little bit of design.